Diya Mirza, thank you so much for your time and being a part of In the Spotlight. Thank you, Ambika. Thank you. Now, for you've having... been very busy shooting for Sanjay Dutt's biopic. How's it going? It's been really wonderful. It's uh, an opportunity to work with my favorite filmmaker. Uh, the last time we collaborated was Silagera Homunna Bhai. Uh, and coincidentally, Sanjay Dutt was a part of that film. And even though Sanju is not physically present on our film set, it, but it is about him. And uh, I'll never forget the first day when I walked onto set and I saw Ranbir walk in. I actually thought it was Sanju, sir. Uh, that's how real and how honest his depiction and portrayal of him is. Post reading the script of the film, I'm sure you can't disclose too much, but anything in particular that, that surprised you about Sanjay Dutt's life that you didn't know or you were not aware of earlier? I think there's a lot that going, that's going to surprise people. I think the one thing that I did feel when I uh, heard the narration, Raju likes to narrate his films, he's a very good narrator, you know, that it's so classic. Uh, of his style and at the same time it's so refreshing it's such a departure uh, from the way he usually tells his stories so it's a it's a very very you know heady mix of the quintessential Rajkumar Hirani style of storytelling and at the same time such a sharp contrast because the character is Sanjay Dutt right <laughs> so it's a, it's it's going to be a revelation I think for people when they watch it You've been very busy, you won the Green Crusader Award, uh, you've adopted two cubs. Uh, that was years ago. But, so, uh, so tell us about your love for the environment and what do you think are the problems and uh, what have you really been supporting? I think my love and my connection to uh, nature goes back to my uh, formative years. I don't know whether it has to do with the fact that I grew up in a city like Hyderabad in the 80s. Uh, amidst greenery and rocks and trees and just like an abundance of nature in my childhood, climbing trees and plucking fruit. I think it's the close connection with just the outdoors growing up. Uh, maybe the fact that I went to a J. Krishnamurti school and a lot of our classes were held in the outdoor. Maybe also the fact that the alarm bells for climate change had started ringing in the 80s. So there was a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversation in school, a lot of effort to kind of engage with us and help us uh, understand sustainability better and sustainable living better. And I think it was also my father uh, who, uh, being an artist, believed that the the biggest trigger for imagination that sparks imagination in a child's mind is the outdoors and his nature. When I finally started to live in Mumbai and I, was, I became a part of the film industry, I started uh, looking at climate change again more closely and trying to seek solutions so to use my job and use what I do as a film personality to communicate the important message of climate change and climate action. And I think in the last seven years, what I've had the good fortune of doing is to collaborate with Sanctuary. It is a magazine, but now is also a nature foundation and the Wildlife Trust of India. And the first film I actually directed last year, it was a PSA for kids called Kids for Tigers, was along this theme to build, the, build a bridge between urban kids and urban adults towards understanding that you're not apart from nature but you're a part of nature and what you in fact do to the environment you're doing to yourself. Just as an individual, I don't even know if this is because I'm in film, whether because I have, I have, I can yield a certain amount of influence, I choose to do what I do, but even if I wasn't, I would be using every resource at my disposal to help people understand that it's all connected, you know, we need to fix this because um, if we don't, one in four children will have, uh, you know, be living with scarcity of water by 2040 and that's not nice at all. And what do you reckon people should do, uh, let's say everybody may be in this room, what can we all do in our individual capacity? I think a simple thing to become, lead a more environmentally friendly life, to reduce your carbon put footprint is to buy food locally, you know, uh, avoid takeaway. Uh, eat out, there's nothing wrong with eating out, but every time you kind of take away, you are producing garbage uh, because there's that much more trash that you create. Replacing plastic with glass. I think just being more con 
conscious about how many things you bring into your life and whether that's electronics or gadgets or clothes or whatever it is just becoming more aware of it and that leads to reduction in consumption it also makes you seek out alternatives uh, i know a lot of people don't realize that buying locally from your local market actually is like a huge contribution to the environment okay great tell us about uh, the chita cups that you adopted and where can we find them this was many years ago um at the lucknow zoo there was a lady uh, called renu uh, who actually was is, is still i think the uh, uh, runs the zoo she got in touch with me saying that they had a a, a chita who had been rescued from a village in mirzapur so she was called the amrza <laughs> for nice enough. okay and she had two cubs and uh, she asked me whether i would like to take care of them you know like basically contribute to their well being uh this was about 7 year, 8 years ago and i agreed uh but i think what has happened of course i did it for a few years but now i am completely against the concept of zoos and animals being held in captivity so i don't encourage it i do know that when cam- animals are already there it's always better to kind of make sure that they are well fed and well taken care of and if citizens can contribute to that it's great but it's a bit of a double edged sword there so torn between uh wanting all sh- zoos to be shut down and you know hoping that the zoos that do exist would care for the for their animals better um let's go back in time you from hyderabad how did you decide to participate in miss india i had no aspiration uh, i didn't i was on one of those girls who grew up conscious about the way i looked uh in fact i didn't take take my looks very seriously at all uh i think maybe because i grew up in an environment where i had my mother constantly telling me any time and anybody praised me or said i was pretty sure say don't let that get to your head so um i was modeling on the fly just kind of for extra pocket money uh which also happened by sheer coincidence and uh i happened to do a, a editorial shoot for the times of india for uh women's day it was like a women's day spread the times of india happened to see my pictures in that editorial and i got a call from the times office asking me whether i would like to participate and i was taken aback because like i said it wasn't my scheme of things to do uh, and then when i went back home and had a conversation with my mother about it my parents actually and they were both taken aback because i was all set to go to law school and they were like where did this come from so i was like no i think i should go because i know a lot of girls who really want this and it's come to me you know on a platter it's an offer and i think i should take it you know and and see what this experience will give me for the first time in my life at 17 i kind of left home i came to mumbai at that time in the miss india pageant was not what it is uh you know you had to like figure out where you were staying and figure out your travel and do everything on your own and i'd saved up a little money so showed up in mumbai and participated and yeah it was like a paradigm shift after that my life changed completely your first film was rena hai tere dil mein and uh, before that you did feature in a tamil song yes i did in fact there was one of the first few things i did to earn my pocket money there was a song an item song that uh, uh, mink Uh, was shooting in Hyderabad at Ramoji Film City and they wanted models in the song which is like a a name used a term used for girls who are you you're not junior artists but they want slightly nicer looking people so they say they want models so i had this um coordinator call me in Hyderabad and say that you know it's a 3 day shoot you will get 7000 rupees a day will you come and i was like wow that's a lot of money <laughs> and i went and i shot for it and it's really funny because i uh, people keep asking me that question even now like on twitter and people like send a grab of the video and say is this you and i'm like yeah that's like 15 and a half 16 year old me that was me lovely uh um, now how did you decide to become a producer from an actor because you have produced couple of films as well i think it was just my my passion for the craft and also my my disillusionment with the industry it was a combination of both i think there was a part of me that wanted to tell a certain kind of story that believed in a certain kind of cinema i didn't believe that there were enough people doing it 
and I wanted to be able to create the opportunity for people who thought similarly or wanted similar things from the, the, the medium. At 27, I decided that I wanted to set up a film production company, much to the uh, shock of my uh, colleagues because they thought that I was being completely insane. There were so many people who said, why are you doing that? You're still so beautiful. And I was like, what does my physical beauty have to do with a, a, a professional choice that I'm making? But for some reason, people don't correlate the two. They don't believe that. I think the, what the mindset was at the time was that if you are in the throes of your career as an actor, the choice to turn film producer would signal to filmmakers that you're not interested in acting anymore. It's a little bizarre, the, uh, I, the construct. But I think it's also kind of self-created because I really think that it takes for women in cinema to kind of break the ceiling really and say that uh, we, we're not the stereotype that you want us to be. We are individuals, we're thinking people, we care and we, we want to kind of widen our horizons, do more with ourselves and that's how Born Free was born really. Does Dia Mirza have a tattoo? Not yet. What would it be? I want a tiger.